168. Whoa. Three, two, three. Here, here. So this is the thing we practiced yesterday. How to detect adverb phrases, prepositional phrases, and adjective phrases. On the other hand, we also talked about verb phrases because they exist where? Do you remember where we can consult verb phrases? I mean, these are adverb, prepositional, and an adjective, but what about the green? The green phrases. Anyone? There are a verb to relate to verbs, teacher? Of course. A uh, verb phrase is a group of words that that describe uh, that, that together put the verb, but where can we consult them? Because Yesterday we spoke about that. Where can we study them from? Is on the student's handbook? Yes, that's correct. Very good, lady. Yesterday we said that verb phrases, everything you need to know about verb phrases is in the structures handbook. And precisely it's there because in the structures handbook, I have made a compendium of all the correct positions and, and applications of uh, auxiliaries, verbs, connectors that are correct or not, modal verbs, etc. And they are in the same colors that we are studying. In the structures handbook, you will see verbs in color green, and they have a relationship with the adverb phrase. Why do they have the relationship with the adverb phrase? Do you remember why? Come on, guys. Please tell me you remember. Can you repeat the question? Sure. Yesterday we said that the everything we need, you need to know about verb phrases, technically you have seen it with me and I have put everything on the structures handbook. In the structures handbook, you have all the, the correct application of verb phrases. This together with the relationship that verb phrases have with adverb phrases. Because here you have, you have purple information, but what is the relationship between these two? How do we know or why am I talking about adverb phrases in the structures handbook? What is the relationship between an adverb phrase and a verb phrase in the structures handbook? The time and location. Uh huh. The time and location of the I'm verb. I'm not sure if I. You are very close. Verb? Not location, but definitely time. 
And if you see all the different the different pages, you will see time expression and time expressions. These time expressions are adverb phrases because they tell you the when of the verb. Does it make sense? Yes. What about the rest? Jesse, Carlita, Silvana, Isaac, what do you understand? Uh, could you please repeat that part? What part? I, I, the relationship. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> It's so, because I, I couldn't hear very well. Silvana's laptop is not the best. <laughs> <laughs> no problem, no problem. The word, the no, adverb good. Is, except it's a powerful, yes, it's just. But anyway, the adverb phrase in the, in the structure handbook represents the time expression and when the verb happens. Okay. So if you say, for example, I went to the supermarket. When did you go to the supermarket? Last Friday. Last Friday is a time expression. And last Friday is an adverb phrase. Okay, I, I got it. Thanks. Right? All the expressions that are in purple here represent the adverb phrase. And all this is in your structures handbook. Okay. And then we closed this lesson with the rest, with adverbs, with prepositional, with adjectives. But we never, we never spoke about noun phrases in detail. So today, what are we going to do is to give you more examples of noun phrases and how they work to finish this week of work. Noun phrases follow the rules of nouns, but they can be expanded. So let's talk about a simple noun phrase. Okay. Simple noun phrases. The cat, a book, or only a name, John. These are noun phrases. How do you know they're noun phrases? Because, well, they are nouns, including the article. Remember that all adjectives together are technically part of the noun. This is better exemplified in the next set of examples. Noun phrase with the determiner. Here you have the red car, an apple, my friend. Question, is red a noun? It's an adjective. It's an adjective, but because it's describing the car and it's together in the same, let's say, context, it should be considered together as a noun. How do you know that? If you put this into a sentence, for example, if you say the red car is fantastic, you can replace the red car for the pronoun it. It is fantastic. All the information is represented with the word it. Does it make sense? So in this case, the noun is not only car. Car is a principal noun, but the rest of the information altogether make a noun phrase. Here, an, an apple. What about an apple? Why it is um simple noun? 
And no, well, the question is why, uh, for example, in the in simple noun phrase, we have a book, and in noun phrase with adjectives, we have an apple. Exactly. Technically, as we saw in the group, uh, you know, in in the word families, articles, quantifiers, and possessives are included as adjectives. So, technically, this is considered that is modifying the apple. You know, that means that there are two different names for the same thing. You know, technically, yeah. you can okay. consider. Aha, uh -huh. there are two different names for the same exact thing. This is a simple okay. thing because you only have an article and an accountable noun. But then here, you can talk about a noun and an extra word, which is an adjective. My is an adjective, and the adjective, the red is an adjective. Got it? Not so well. <laughs> it's the same thing. It's technically, I'm just teaching you how to how to consider adjectives part of the noun in a normal sentence. Yeah. But at the end, every time you find the noun, just consider the rest of the information. Yes. Okay. Well, that's that's the thing I want to try to say. Okay, yeah. If you want to find the noun, don't only say car. Say the red car. If you want to find the the name, the noun, don't say only apple. Say an apple. Always. Got it? But then you can use more adjectives. For example, here. A beautiful sunset. Now it's a little bit more complex. We have more information. Beautiful. Three tall buildings. Now we, there is no article, but you have a number. You see? If you want to find the noun, consider all the words that go together. There is also a relationship between noun phrases and prepositional phrases. This is pretty interesting because we are going to talk about two different colors. What colors are prepositions, guys? Yellow? Correct. This is color yellow. So check this out. Look at these words. The house on the hill. A cup of coffee. The girl with the blue backpack. Is there any other yellow? Yeah. <laughs> other. Is there any other? That's the thing you're going to help me find. What no, no because I can, I can read the, <laughs> the words. Ah, uh, do you need another yellow? Yeah. Jesus Christ, eh? Mm, what about, what if I do this and then this? Oh, yes, yeah. that's better. Hmm? <laughs> what Dirty part... and it's still working. <laughs> <laughs> 29, 29. Come on. <laughs> Excellent, excellent quote. <laughs> okay, in the word, the house on the hill, how would you, what part is a prepositional phrase? Tell me, Jessica, what section in the house on the hill is a prepositional phrase? Mm, on the hill? 
Excellent, lady. Yesterday you learned it. Yes. And this is not independent information, guys. On the hill is not independent from the house. All together is an alpha. So if you want to find the noun, consider the information that is connected with a proposition. The same thing happens with of a cup, a cup of what? A cup of coffee. And the girl, which girl? The girl with the blue backpack. Prepositional phrases helping you give more information. The interesting part is when you have a complex noun phrase. When this information can be even longer. Complex noun phrase. All this information is the noun. The old weather beaten abandoned house on the corner is mine. Several enthusiastic soccer players from different countries arrived. A delicious slice of chocolate cake with vanilla frosting. was taken ah. with all that information can exist as a subject or as an object and that's the reason the listening is so complex because sometimes you have a lot of information in only one phrase that you need to memorize instantly my tip my listening tip is First, find your principal noun and then understand the previous information. How do you know this? Find the principal noun in the first example. If you need to reduce the all weather beaten abandoned house on the corner to a simple noun, The simple noun is the corner. Which corner? The all weather beaten abandoned house. I know house, the house. Sorry. Which house? The all weather beaten abandoned house on the corner. It's only expanded to the front. That's how you can reduce a massive bunch of information into smaller pieces. And it becomes much, much easier. Find the next simple noun. Um, Elsie, help me reduce the expression several enthusiastic soccer players from different countries. What would be the simple noun for this? The, sorry? The ah, the simple noun. Soccer players? Soccer players, there's, okay, you can talk about that, the simple noun. I was thinking several players, because the word several is very important, uh, you know, but soccer player is also good. I mean, if, no, you need to use several, eliminate soccer. Uh -huh. You need to use several because players is countable. So, but, but when you are using soccer players in plural, you are referring uh, to more than one, no? But then, how many? 
Well, so, yeah, so, several yeah. doesn't provide like an exact number neither, no? No, but also, for example, you have some, many, a lot of, a few, you see? Okay, and yeah. All that information can be also plural. So technically the, the main, that's the reason, for example, you cannot say only book as a simple now. You know, you need something else to back it back it up. So book, but okay, what book? The book or a book? Okay, yeah. Huh? And in this case, players. Okay, but how many players? Several, many, much. My, it can be also my. Their, it can be a possessive. Okay, yes, I think we can include it. We have to. Exactly, we have to. That will be the option. Carlita, find the simple noun to a delicious slice of chocolate cake with vanilla frosting. Mm. Slice. Mm, I think there's something else. Mm, well, uh, slice. Exactly. Repeat. Uh, slice. Exactly. Why only slice? I was considering cake, but that you are correct. It's not the cake. It's only one piece of the cake. The rest of the information is a prepositional phrase. So all that information is considered, let's say, complementary to call it in a way because it's not a complement, okay? Remember, it's only additional information, let's say. Are there any questions here? No. Cool. So why is it useful to find the simple noun? Why are we checking this information? I don't know, you are the teacher. Come on guys, you can. Why? No, you don't know why, what's the objective of the lesson? Why are we checking this? No one? Anyone? To identify it when we are listening, mm -hmm. identify the now, uh, uh, um, the most important information. That's it. Yes, yes, yes. To reduce massive pieces of information into simple ones when you are listening and when you are reading it it's gonna, it's gonna help you also read faster because you can eliminate all the the, the extra decoration on the reading and you can go directly to the principal word okay 
to practice this, you are going to find the different phrases that exist in the following paragraph. The following paragraph is a little extract from a website that I, from a news that I took some months ago. What we're gonna do is to analyze this paragraph and to understand what's what are the phrases that exist in it. When we finish, we're gonna do a summary using the most important information, okay? So let's go with the first phrase. Um, let's read the complete text first. Help me, Carlita. Um, uh, exercise series of phrases form together complex sentences. The who estimates it estimates that the COVID nineteen pa pandemic has killed almost fifteen million people worldwide, not just from the virus, but as an indirect result of the crisis crisis such mm -hmm. as being the uh, again crisis or okay. crisis. This, I am not sure. Mm, dictionary, dictionary, dictionary. Go. Crisis. Correct. Crisis. Okay. Uh, both, uh, but as an indirect result of the crisis, such as being unable to get other kinds of medical care because hospital yeah. systems... Again, again. They were unable to get what? Get other kinds. What is kinds? Or kinds. Exactly. Kinds. Do kinds. you know what is kind? Um, yes, I think. <laughs> Synonym? Um, synonym. Uh, type. Exactly. That's correct. So it's, it's very similar to the pronunciation. Type, kind, type, yes. kind. Okay. Mm -hmm. So again. Okay. Such as being unable to get other kinds of medical cares because hospital systems were overburdened. Meet. Overburden ends in N. How do you pronounce Overbur it? Overburden it. Mm. But no. the verb, how do you pronounce the ED when the verb ends in N? So we're here. D. Uh, only D. Only D. Correct. Overburden Overburdened. Overburdened. <laughs> Overburdened. Very good. Overburdened. Okay. So how were the hospital systems? Overburdened. Perfect. Okay. But it didn't have to be so catastro catastrophic. Mm -hmm. Experts say its impacts were exacerbated by a number of factors. The world was ill prepared for a pandemic. Many countries were slow to develop and provide access to COVID-19 tests. An economic inequality made everything worse. This is an example. Okay. Do we, everybody understands the text? Teacher, yes. I prepare is like the, the the world was not ready for it. Prepare, where is it? Uh, in the last paragraph at the beginning, the world was ah ill prepared for a pandemic. Yes. Uh, 
the world was still prepared for a pandemic, many countries were also to develop. Aha, uh -huh, exactly. That was not ready. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Nice. 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 Easy. Overburdened. Overburdened. Uh, think about the context. Hospital systems were overburdened. It means that there were so many. Uh, uh, what's the word? Is? Patients entering the hospital. You know, so many that the hospitals couldn't assist everybody. You know, okay. so overburden is when when you have a load of work that is higher than your your possibilities. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. So I will start helping you with color white. Okay. I'm going to select the the what the the phrase that we are going to analyze. And then you need to tell me what color shall I color it. So let's start with the first one. Go, Silvana. What color should this be? And why? It's a noun. It's a noun. And how do you know it's a noun? Because she is very intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> because you are, here, you are here, boyfriend, so I cannot trust that. That's not <laughs> but you know me like... Since, I don't remember three years ago, four years ago. <laughs> yes, yes, as a as a friend, as a <laughs> not as a student. Yes, exactly. Uh, because it's naming a word. It's naming a word. Uh, it's no, almost, almost. Is a. Uh, word naming. Mm. Kinda. Use naming as an adjective. Names. Names? No, no, no. I, naming. ING as an adjective. It's a naming word. Yeah, it's a naming word. Exactly. Because it's different to say naming a word than a naming word. Yes, it's name. You know? It, it's... it happened to me just uh -huh, yeah. exactly. Uh -huh. It was yeah. the same issue. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. So again, it is a naming word. That is correct. Good job. The who is a naming word. Perfect. Next. Elsie. What color should this be? Green. Green, how do you know that? Mm. Because it's a verb. Because it's a verb? That was very easy. Okay, 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 okay. We're going places. Let's go to the next. Jesse. Mm. You need this and also this. Color. Uh, it's a uh, now. It's a noun. How do you know that? Mm, mm, because <laughs> I am not sure. After we, maybe it's not the best answer, but because after we have a verb. Okay. Well, that answer tells me that you know what is a subject, mm, but yes. what is a noun? Mm, okay. Mm. Noun. It could mm. be subject. No, 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 but we are not talking about parts of the sentence. 
parts okay. of the sentence are not the same as parts of the speech. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you're talking about the parts of the speech, we are talking about naming words, you know, which are naming words for things or people. For example, Fernando is a, is a noun. Jessica mm -hmm. is a noun. Elsie is a noun. And the COVID-19 pandemic is a noun because it's a... Mm -hmm. Sorry, I know. <laughs> it's a long time. What uh, are nouns? No, because it could replace with other, uh, I am not sure, with other, uh, with other pronoun. But there is something easier. Read again this. Yeah. Pronoun are... No, 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 nouns. Here. Uh. Sorry. Uh, yes. Nouns are naming words for things and people. They are so, right, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Nouns are naming words for things or people. What is your name? Jessica. Jesse. Jesse is a noun because it's a naming word. Yes. Or in shorter, in shorter terms. A noun is a name. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. So then the COVID-19 pandemic is a noun because it's a? A name? Yes, my lady. Okay. The COVID-19 pandemic is a noun because it's a name. Easy as that. Got it? Yes. Very good. That's it. Wait. This should be here. This should be here. Okay. What about... This section, Elsa, no wait, you have already checked this one. Um, Carlita. Um, it's a verb. It's a verb, how do you know that? Is... Is selection a skill? Selection. Mm -hmm. That okay. is the simple explanation. You are mainly correct. Remember that if you're talking about a verb, it can be found on the structures handbook. Okay. Mm -hmm. but you can say, for example, it's a verb because it matches with a structure structure six here it is mm -hmm. okay so if you okay. if you open everybody your handbook and tell me what structure the verb matches okay So you can you can get a better 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 analysis on verbs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. What about this information, Elsie? But this is incomplete. Eh? Just a second. It's all this information. Almost fifteen million people worldwide. Prepo preposition phrase? Your it could be if almost were an a preposition, but it's not a preposition. Mm. You are very close, but it's not a preposition. Adverb. <laughs> that was the only option, right? Yes. Yeah. Correct. An adverb, and I'm going to give you the, uh, I'm going to help you through the why. 
an adverb will always answer a question. The how, the when, the where, the why, or any variation of the how. In this case, what will be the question that the adverb answer? How many? Precise. How much? Many, because it's countable. So this is an adverb phrase because it responds to how many people has killed. Make sense? Yes. It's clear. Fantastic. Next. Mm. Here. Silvana, what kind of word is this? A conjunction? A conjunction? We haven't studied conjunctions, so don't worry about that. Okay, so it's not a conjunction. <laughs> <laughs> It can be probably you have you remember some lessons from the past, but we are not going to use that yet. Mm -hmm. It is an adverb too. It is an adverb too. How do you know that? Mm -hmm. Difficult to explain, no? Yes. Don't worry. Think about negatives, and in a moment, I come back to you. Meanwhile, let's go through Jessica, because she's in the chat. Hello, girl. Hello, teacher. Good night. Good night, Hello. everyone. I will take attendance, please. Is he Elsie? Hi, Elsie. Good night. Hello, good night. Thank you, Elsie. Uh, Jessie, hello, Jessie. Good night. Hello, good night. Thank you, Jesse. Uh, Denise, hello, Denise. Good night. Hello, good night. Thank you, Denise. Hi. And Silvana, hello, Sil. Good night. Hello, Jesse. Good night. Thank you, Sil. And are you there, Isaac? Hello, yes, I'm here. Thank you. Good night. So, thank you, everyone. Okay. Have a good night and good weekend. See you on Monday. Bye -bye. Thank you, Jesse. You too. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. It's introducing information? And not really. The word has a relation with the verb because the word not does something very special to the verb. What make does the word not do? Make it negative. Make it negative. And that's the only application of the word not. The only possible application of the word. The word just is giving you information of the verb to. Because if you don't say just, just can be an adjective or it can be a, an adverb, depending on what you are describing. You know? What happened not just from the virus? You know, what happened not just from the virus? An uh, indirect result of the something. <laughs> of what in the text? According to the rules, another should describe a verb. Uh, yes. Uh, died. Exactly. This is the one that is connected to this. 
Ok, has killed. They, uh -huh. The COVID-19 pandemic has killed people, not just from the virus. They were not killed just from the virus. Okay. You see? That is the usage. Next, what about here? Oops, that's purple. Mm, here. Carlita, what kind of word is this? Um, maybe is a noun phrase with prepositional phrases. Correct. With of a noun. I think excellent with simple in simple words it's just a noun but yes of course you you selected exactly the subcategory of noun phrase mm -hmm. why is it a noun the uh, the cri the crisis why is a simple uh, ah because why is it a noun Ah, uh, because it's the name, is a naming word, no? Good job. Mm -hmm. Good, good job. The next, Isaac, what is this word? Um, such as... It's an adverb. How do you know that? Uh, I feel that this... Uh, like introducing more information. Like totally for, correct, uh, my friend. They're introducing more examples. Correct. All the words like such as, for example, furthermore, e even though, etc., they are adverbs. Mm -hmm. Introductory adverbs, they call it. Good. So whenever you said uh, in the questions of an audio, uh, give me two examples of uh an indirect results of the crisis so then you are going to expect uh for example for instance such as in instance etc makes sense yeah, yeah I'm sure. this, this was the easiest question <laughs> nice <laughs> very good yeah the next what about this one Jesse. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait. All this actually, it's including all this information. Mm. I am not sure I think it's a adverb phrase. And how do you know it's an adverb phrase? Because it add information. It add information. No, yes, not that. Answer information. Okay. Uh, do you have the question that it answers? Mm, I am thinking. <laughs> ah, exactly. I think there's that there's no question to to answer that. <laughs> you know, this information comes after a such as. Uh -huh. Such as is similar uh, to say, for example. And it's a adverb. Uh -huh. Anyway, uh, forget about the adverb such as. Think about the, 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 in what cases 
do you need to say, for example, I like movies, for example. Mm, okay. What it's... do you say after? Uh, uh, so. <laughs> oh, okay. It's so, a, is the name a, um, Yes, a noun. Exactly. All this information is just a noun. Mm -hmm. Because it's one of the problems that COVID-19 or one of the indirect results of the crisis. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yes. Very good. Elsie, what about this? Mm. Mm. Noun phrase? Noun phrase, how do you know that? Mm. Because it's a naming word. What it's naming a... word? Totally correct. Perfect. Silvana, what about this one? It's an adjective. It's an adjective incorrect. It works as an adjective, but no. The word where is so it's a verb. That makes sense. If it's a verb, what structure does it follow? Can you give me an example of a structure? Um you know, all the context. Like past, present, and... No? If you are familiar with with uh, grammatical terms, you can choose grammatical terms. If you have oh. studied my structures handbook, you can use my structures handbook. You select. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is there any other option? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but... I'm, I literally, you have everything in front of you. All my, a, all my um, um, an event with a specific past. Incorrect. Because overburden is not a verb naturally. You are talking about in the only structure we use where plus past participle is when you are talking about passive voice. Okay. It's a past participle working as an adjective. That's the reason you said adjective. But technically, um, this is a this is technically a verb. So it's a verb and it's passive voice. Oh yes, it's a verb and it's passive voice. Teacher, do I need to memorize that information? Well, if you want to say correct structures, yes. If not, if you don't, <laughs> you 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 can talk it like you wanted to to whatever whatever. <laughs> okay, that sounds correct, no? It it sounds um um how to say <laughs> tropical <laughs> formal. Formal. Damn. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I would say not so formal. But then you have your idea. Guys. Yes, class. Do you see there the 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 do you see now why I say that when I listen to people I hear colors? It's much, much easier to identify text this way. And if you understand, if I ask you a question, for example, if I say, uh, Carla, according to the text, what did the COVID pandemic do? 
what is the answer? What did the COVID-19 pandemic do? Uh, killed almost 15 million people worldwide. Automatically, you go to the important information, to the answer, you see? It's easier to locate information if you divide them by, by phrases. If I ask you, Elsie, uh, what is an indirect result of the crisis, of the COVID-19 crisis? Hospital system were over bonded. Close, close because you, you ignore the such as. Give me an example of an indirect result of the crisis. Being unable to get other kinds of medical care. That is. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. With automatically you you went to the to the nouns. If I ask you, Jessica, who estimates that the COVID-19 pandemic has killed almost 15 million people? The who. who? Answer, the who. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I got out of questions just because of the time. We need to check the list. Do you have any question, my people? Not sure. Well, you're done for the day. I'll see you on Monday. Uh, relax. Please watch movies in English. Check everything. And I'll see you on... Yeah, enjoy your weekend. Okay, thank you. You too. Thank you, teacher. You bye too. Bye-bye. See you later. Eat a lot of... Uh, a lot of bread. Sure. Bye-bye. <laughs> See you.